Hello and welcome to another update video about Solana. Yeah, Solana chart. Um, let's talk about it on the daily chart first, weekly chart. Yeah, I, I still like the look of the impulse to the upside. Um, I like the look of the move down. Okay, it was not a very clear three wave move, but it was not impulsive, at least not clearly. So we currently give it a chance that the bear market low is in with the last low that was made here on the, well, that week, end of December, early January. And yeah, what's currently coming off the lows isn't clearly impulsive. That's what uh, is a little bit annoying, okay? So what I'm thinking could be forming here maybe is a larger diagonal structure maybe in the beginning, yeah? Maybe a B wave correction. So obviously in the white wave count, we would say that we can still reset a little lower. And if we do it, relevant support here on the daily weekly time frame is going to be $5.40 and $1.80. So I'm, I don't see that level down there, okay? But $5.40 is realistic in the scenario of another bear market low, yeah? So just be aware, and that would be a level where I think wave two could reset if it needs to, probably in an event in which Bitcoin would also make a new all-time low. Not, not, no, not all-time low, a new bear market low. I also don't see that at the moment as primary scenario, okay? So for now we are cautiously optimistic. I see opportunity there. It always depends on which time frame you're operating in. So, you know, if you deal here with the daily weekly time frame, you just want to get some exposure for the next bull run. I mean, I think we're still in a fairly interesting space, um, especially when we talk about targets for the next bull run around $440 to $713. Now, I don't want to hype it. I feel it's not the best time to talk about those targets, but it's always worth mentioning them when we are on such a time frame. Bear in mind, overall, it is still an altcoin, yeah, and there is never a guarantee to get there. But still, of all the altcoins, I think Solana has one of the better charts. Now, let's dive into this here, yeah, into this section. And here we can see on the Solana short-term chart, this structure. Again, my, my perspective is that either... This was here a one, two setup. At the time we did have a trend reversal area here, which was very profitable. And another A, B setup with a C wave to the upside to come. I can only tell you this is not a high quality setup at the moment, but the reward to risk ratio is pretty good. So obviously the one, two setup was one and now A, B. You don't really see a difference between them. You just need to be aware that I always have to call out the risk when we deal with an A, B setup. While the C wave um, could then start from here and could be an impulse, the structure of this move up here into the July highs was not clearly impulsive. It was just corrective. So it could easily break down. You know, it could turn into a lot of things. That's the problem. Had this been a very clear impulse, it would be easier, but it's not. But I like the idea that we could go higher from here because the move down is corrective. So from that point of view, I give it the chance at the moment. But for me, basically a make or break, well, make or break point is down here at $12.80. This is the make or break point for this scenario. Um, but likelihoods for this scenario will already reduce below $15. But just be aware that just by going below 15 and also going below $12.80, it doesn't necessarily make it directly bearish due to this structure. And that's why I always say, okay, maybe it's worth leaving altcoin trades a little bit more space when you operate on this time frame. Just simply this wave too could reset a little bit lower. And that's all possible because of this move up. Because when you know, know about Elliott wave, this move down instead of a wave two could have been an A wave. Yeah, the move down into the June lows. This could be an overshooting B wave, and that's only possible because of the corrective nature of the rally and the move down a C wave in which we could or could not make a new low. No, that's, yeah, that, that's unfortunately both possible. Therefore, I can only tell you these possibilities. Need to leave that with you. Um, I would, you know, there are a few things how, how this can be dealt with. So first of all, you could say, okay, I'm, I'm just buying a little bit because we're very close to, let's say, key support anyway, also on the daily time frame. You know, uh, if we operate on this time frame, we talk about, you know, $400 to $700 for the next bull run. You know, if you operate on that kind of time frame, it doesn't really matter if you buy now, or if you buy a little lower, but I would only do that with a spot position because there's no way, as I've just demonstrated to you, there is no way to set a tight stop loss. 
unless you operate on a smaller time frame. So we can go to the one hour chart and oops, there's something with the mouse. One second, I should be better now. Yep. Um, and you maybe just set a stop below the last swing low here, yeah, or even this swing low of the 18th of September. You know, that's obviously a clear uh, stop loss that you can set, where you can set a tight stop loss. It's just that at the moment, we haven't got uh, on the one hour time frame not the reliable setup to say that the trend has shifted back to the upside. We had a potential here, and I did give you at the time a bullish support area. Didn't pull back very deep, but support held at $17.80. The 78.6 FIB level is always the level to watch should the um, should we have five waves up and we were able to identify five waves up. So I gave you a pullback zone or a support area that needed to hold for trend continuation higher. And we're now at that neckline for a potential inverse head and shoulders that could, unf could unfold. Yeah. Um, but it needs to get a break above that $20, 20 level, then follow through above $20.60. Then we have further evidence that a low is in. And if it then fills in the white wave count, we have the same situation that we had here in small. And I can provide you with a support area that you could use to, to scale in, for example, to position yourselves. Just note that below the support area, if it breaks below it, things are going to break with a high likelihood. Um, however, if we have five waves up, then the likelihood of it breaking reduces. So that's sort of the, the mindset. The first five waves up give us an indication or actually first evidence that the trend has shifted back to the upside and buying pullbacks in an uptrend are always the lowest risk trades. Um, but be aware about the $20.20 .20 level. That is a breakout point. Yeah, a move above that level takes us to $20.60. If it gets above that level, $22 next, which is also the target for this third wave and then a pullback in the fourth wave and a last wave up in five. How, how high these extend, I don't know, right? But it, you know, you need to know that they can extend, even this third wave can extend like crazy. So that's always difficult for, for people who then decide to wait, you know, for clarity, um, but they can always extend, but they will always, there will always be a wave two, yeah, sooner or later. Yeah, but that's my update at the moment about Solana. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And if you're interested in the membership, uh, as a channel member, you get access to the weekly live streams. Next one is on Sunday. They're always educational. We also cover some requests. As gold member, you get additional market updates and short-term Elliott Wave signals. And also you get generally access to the Discord and Telegram service or chat rooms. Um, and the, uh, yeah, basically there's a bit of a knowledge base, you know, and a lot of educational content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.